From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's great to be back with you. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's always uh, nice to be back, especially when we have a guest. That's right. That's right. And uh, we teased this in the last show, but uh, not to uh, anyone's surprise if you're an avid listener, but you'll get to meet and say hi to Kate Atkins. And she is the user experience engineering manager at Root Systems. Welcome back, Kate. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Um, so as it says in your your title, and, and one of the things that we've connected on in the past is the idea of uh, user experience, user interface. And that's something that in my career of almost 30 years in, in the industry, it's been uh, gotten a lot of attention that it's also been uh, a little bit downplayed. And, and now we're kind of in this mode these days of um, simplification and, and, um, and ease of, of implementation and out of the, out, out of the box solutions. So um, I really wanted to talk with you and, and um, we had talked before on, on the uh, state of control podcast, just about how do we get to provide a good uh, user interface and user experience, given the, the really the, the climate of our industry these days and, and, you know, what, is it something that people are willing to still invest in and pay for and, and, you know, and, and, kind of how do we get there? So so I guess maybe um, to, and James and I have talked about this a bit and, and that's why we were excited to have you on, but um, the, so when, why don't we just start at, you know, at the top with regard to, you know, developing a good user experience um, when you're talking with a client and, and um, you're trying to kind of weigh the options um, where do you start? You know, it's, it's really, it's sometimes for, for people that don't know it, you, you don't even know um, how, how to, to get to the outcome that a client is going to be happy with. Yeah. I, I think the best place to start is trying to figure out what they're trying to do with the system. Um, because the systems that we do could, could be infinitely configurable in a lot of these cases. Um, so you want to try to figure out the actual tasks that somebody is coming in to use that system for. Um, maybe the task is as simple as I want to place a Teams call, but I also want to know that that system is working correctly. And, and I want that feedback to let me know that my Teams call is going correctly. Or maybe it's a Zoom call, you know, whatever. Um, maybe they want to come in and you've got you know, VoIP or something in there and they want that feedback as well. It's really about having a conversation with users through the system. So you want to understand their intent, interpret it, share that with, you know, with the system that you're, you're programming, obviously, um, and then give them feedback. You're having that conversation with them. You want to tell them the results. Um, but it's really, really important to understand that intent first so that the rest of the conversation kind of flows correctly, right? <laughs> So that, that's kind of where I, I find that the best place to start is trying to trying to find the people that are going to be using the system is the most important. Like, who do we need to talk to to get the right person in the room? Um, and then what are you really trying to do with it so that we can make sure that that conversation flows correctly and, and, and naturally and we're not, you know, misinterpreting each other. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and to treat people like people and try to understand who actually has the needs that need to be met. Um, James, uh, if you want to jump in, then, and I know that you're you're kind of in a, an interesting spot now because you're um, you you are in a, a place where you are also managing outside programmers and having to also make sure that your clients, the students, the the professors that are at a school, their needs are met. Um, what what are some ways that you think are effective in, in making that happen? Um, it's very difficult. Uh, you're you're wrangling cats, as some people would say, when especially in a position like I am, uh, because a lot of times the the programmer, like someone like Kate, wouldn't be able to really talk to the true end user. They're talking to someone like me, who's the in-house integrator so yeah we are the end user to outside people like kate 
but really we're not the true end users using the system. And I think what Kate mentioned is the best is sitting there and having compensation and find out what the room is supposed to do, what the user is doing in the room. And it's all about building that relationship. And it, it seems to be a very common theme in AV is whenever you're talking about, oh, what should you do when you first meet clients and stuff? It's always find out what they're trying to do. But what boggles my mind is, and maybe this is where maybe Kate could shed some light is, why does it seem like many people don't do that? I mean, I know I in my interactions with Steve and Kate, and stuff, you guys seem like you will do that. But I, other people, I'm like, you look at what they're doing and they're like, that makes no sense. Like, why aren't you talking to the end user? That's not how they use it. So sorry, it just kind of popped in my head. <laughs> I, I think to answer that, there's this fine line that we need to walk, right? Where we're the experts. So we understand what's going to be, you know, the most successful system. Um, but it's when we also assume that we know that everything about that system that's going to be most successful, that's kind of when it steps over that line. Um, so I think there's that really fine balance that you need to walk um, where you can you can tell a customer like, yeah, what you were trying to do is really not a great idea because of these things, um, because you're going to get yourself in trouble. <laughs> right. Um, so it's it's trying to find that balance of understanding what people are trying to do and guiding them in the correct way without telling them that, like, oh, yeah, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way because we're the experts and we say so. Um, yeah, I think that that's just, that's probably where most of it comes from is just maybe, maybe people haven't found that balance yet because it is hard to find. On the flip side though, of what you're saying, it, it's, um, it, it's important that we tell them that what, what, what they, that we, we, we advise them and, and listen at the same time. And that, that, that there's a delicate mix there because just doing what they're asking for isn't always the best solution as, as you're, as you mentioned, you know, it's, um, it, it it's kind of telling them, giving, uh, presenting to them maybe the different cases and say, okay, are you sure that this is, you said you want this, are you sure that this is what you want? Um, and, and do you understand what that, uh, what, 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 um, uh, could be the outcomes or, or could be the drawbacks of, of that decision. And that's what, that's what I found. I, I find it to also that sometimes you've got to truly listen to what the user is saying and not take it by surface words. Uh, I mean, I know I wrote about this in, oh, maybe a year ago or longer is really understanding what users saying and troubleshooting and you can use that for programming too but like especially in a higher ed where a user is going to call and say the overhead is not working now us av pros what's an overhead you know that thing that sits on the table that transparency goes on to the screen so i had text reply we don't have overheads what are you talking about the user met the overhead projector to them, that's an overhead projector. Like, so it's none understanding what they're actually trying to do and not just say, oh, you're talking about the overhead. We don't have them. You're not having a problem. Move on. That's funny. Yeah. That, that's that's a good one for the, uh, the AV archives, I think. Oh, yeah. You got to love those archives. I think, to, I think too, to answer your question, James, like you said, I think a lot of times it comes down to uh, the the balance of of costs and and um, the parameters of a project and and I think that that we always have to fight the urge to like every programmers typically want to please clients and and are always willing to do what they can to come up with the best outcome but yet there's also the business side that needs to be factored in and and um, I'm not going to point fingers or place blame, but sometimes those stand in the way of providing the best outcome. And, Agreed. and there's a, there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of efficiencies that are built in programming that take away from the ability to make it more, uh, catered to a particular user, which I think maybe brings in a, you know, kind of 
moves this conversation in, in another direction as you know as we see more of these configurable solutions more of these um pre-developed you user interfaces and a lot of them look really nice is, is um kate I'll, I'll let you um share your thoughts is that is it are we doing right by the client in giving them uh these pre-built solutions that have minimal customization that I could see where they can be valuable in some regard, but it kind of takes away from the idea of what you said, understanding their needs and giving them what 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 is best for them. Yeah, um, I mean, I think there's always going to be that balance, right? And it's it's that that quite, that you know common answer that you're going to get in AB is it depends, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for some places, that's that's the perfect thing. That's all they need. Um, they need a, a Zoom room. They need a Teams room. They need an interface that's completely the same across every single conference room they walk to, and it's it's familiar to them because they've been sitting, you know, on Teams or Zoom or WebEx or whatever for the past two years, right? So they understand that, um, and the the learning curve for the users is a lot less. So if that's all that they need to accomplish, then that's a great solution for them right there. If they need to accomplish more then trying to shoehorn stuff in can can be problematic um trying to, to fit it into something like a, a teams room or a zoom room so go back to understanding what they're trying to do like i said if, if all they're trying to do is they're trying to come in here and they're trying to make a teams call then you know a team system that's that's perfect for them that that interface is perfect that's they're going to do everything that they need to do they're going to understand it like i said it's going to be familiar um they're not going to have to do a big learning curve on how to use it um there's ways that we can enhance that. Um, and that's definitely things that, that we can do to enhance that and like extend that, that experience through the rest of the room um, if it's a little bit more of an integrated system. So kind of taking the QR cues from those types of systems and, and trying to extend it without overriding that sort of thing um, is definitely great in those instances. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, just, it depends. <laughs> Yep, I, I've said that uh, a lot myself. So I I hear where you're coming from there, and and that's that's a good answer, quite honestly. Um, James, we're, one of the things that we talk about, and and we we a lot of people have commonly admitted is that programmers don't make good uh, user interface designers, is you know, and and yet we have Kate here who is, is pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, good good example of that uh, proving that wrong um, is, is you know where where do we stand? Is that that's something that uh, is a requirement these days, or is it something that um, we're going to see more and more specialists? Do you think, in terms of like you write the code, I'll deal with the user experience? Um, I want to say yes and yes, um, <laughs> and again our famous saying, it all depends. So I, I will admit, I am not a graphic person, but I can make a standard UI, a user experience and make it work for our environment, but it may not work for another environment, but just because I understand my users, they understand our experience that we're uh, trying to achieve because we both have the same goal and the, the UI is kind of a standard, you know, it matches to university marketing and stuff. So to me, it's almost like, okay, I don't need to be a UI or UX expert because I'm only need to be an expert in that area for my users. Where someone like Kate, who's probably 10 times better than me at UI UX, um, she has probably multiple clients, multiple verticals that she has to serve. So her skill set need to evolve to all that. So I, I, again, go to our favorite words. It all depends. <laughs> Boy, I guess we know what our show title is, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just just to, to tie into that, I mean, I think having the ability to specialize um, is a great option if you have that ability. Uh, I know there's a lot of integrators out there, um, especially who maybe only have one 
programmer on staff or maybe two, you know, very small number. And you can't really, you know, afford to do that. You can't afford to have, here's my UX specialist, here's my UI specialist who's going to do all the visual design, um, all that sort of things. You don't necessarily have to be great at all of them to be able to get a great product. You can can work with others and, and you know, finding that community of other programmers to work with too. Um, it can be, you know, hiring a third party to do part of it for you. Like maybe somebody else can make a really awesome template for you that just looks fantastic. As long as you understand the UX side of your system. And by UX, I mean um, the context of how everything's gonna, gonna work together um, and kind of like the, the, the way the pieces are gonna fit together and, and how the user is gonna understand what you're trying to do. Somebody else could make you a, a really pretty template that you can use um, and you could buy it. Um, there's you know companies like yours, Steve, that, that make drivers and stuff like that. There's companies out there that make templates and, and sell those sorts of things. Um, you know, I'll admit that I am maybe not the, the greatest person for like writing the drivers. I would much rather find somebody like Steve's company to do that for me <laughs> um, so that I can just use that driver and I can focus on the UX and the UI of it and not worry about that technical programming. Um, cause I, I've said, you know, in other places there's, there's in my mind, there's like those three kind of, um, facets of a control system that we think of in AV. You have that really technical, I'm going to get the bytes in the right format and I'm going to parse it out and I'm going to understand the authentication and all that sort of stuff. Um, you have that UX, which is that like choreography and that, that context of everything. And then your UI is, is, does it look pretty? Is it engaging? Is it easy to read? Um, that sort of thing. So they're kind of three different facets and you can, can either be really good at one and then find other people to help you supplement those other two, or you can try to be good at all three. Um, but that's, that's going to be a lot harder <laughs> just in my mind. No, thank you for that. You, that was very, very well put. So thank you for, for sharing that and that, uh, and, and I, I like the, the idea of the choreography that that's a, uh, that's a re really descriptive word for it. Um, but but I, I, yeah, I am. Um, I think that that's interesting too, because we're starting to now think of ourselves more like full stack development, and and I, to me, and the more we can uh, align with what the rest of the world understands with regard to um, software developers, I think is going to help uh, increase our stature and the respect that we get uh, for what we do. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that um, statement. And, and you'll find it a lot in, in software development. You'll have your front-end developers, you know, your visual designers, you'll have your UX developers who are totally separate and your back-end. So, I mean, thinking in those terms, I think, is just really going to help us all in the future. Absolutely. And I, I like, to the way you alluded to the community, because that's actually uh, a good good way for us to tie this all together, is that, you know, we're we're all in it together and we can work as a team, even though we're in different organizations. Uh, and, and, and as you mentioned, there's specialists that are, are uh, focusing on particular areas. There's some generalists, and then there's some who just looking to supplement their skills, like, like you said. Uh, so very, very well put. Thank you. I think that's probably a good place for us to wrap this one up, but this this is a, a good conversation and I'm curious to hear um, what our audience thinks um, and, and also let us know how you're approaching uh, user interface and user experience. And please um, reach out to to any of us and, and Kate and, and continue this conversation because it's I think it's an important one. It's one that really is um, it gives us some respect for what we do and and also is uh something that i, I feel it, we, we shouldn't take for granted so uh, I, I look forward to continuing that uh, with, with that said kate how can people get in touch with you and learn more about your role at root yeah um you can email me at kate at root integration.com uh, you can check out root at root integration.com of course as well um, i'm also on linkedin i'm not super active as far as posting, but I will always, if you send me a message, um, I'll usually reply pretty quickly. Uh, and I definitely check me out on Twitter. I'm there every Sunday morning, just about uh, at 8 a.m. for AV in the AM. So, so you can definitely find me there. My handle is code underscore Kate. Thank you. And I'm going to encourage everybody to get on LinkedIn and connect with each other because it's a good platform. So I I spend time there. So that'll be my contribution. Uh, James, how can people get in touch with you and 
um, learn more about what you're doing? Uh, Google me. You'll find me. Um, I'm almost everywhere on the internet, especially Sunday mornings, AB and the AM on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn, not active, but I'm on there. I do write for the higher ed digital magazine, IT and AV column. So I'm out there. You'll find me. And for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on most social platforms and read a little bit about the things that I write on the avnetwork.com and commercial integrator, as well as my company uh, website at controlconcepts.net. And uh, we, we definitely want to continue this conversation and get your feedback, get more listeners like Kate on the show. Uh, so please reach out to us. That's the way we need. That's the only way we know you're out there. Uh, so, so let us know. We have some stickers that we're, we, we've uh, sent uh, some folks and brought to trade shows. So we want to get those out in people's hands. So please uh, connect with us, uh, send us some feedback, share your favorite episode. It would mean a lot to us. You could uh, listen to the show on your favorite uh, podcast player, Google and Apple podcasts, as well as watch us on YouTube, watch our recording that is on YouTube. And that's what we have for today. And this has been Ask the Programmer.